welcome back to another History with Hannah. As you can see behind me, we will be talking about the Wright J engine series. Now if you're not a gearhead like me, don't worry. We'll not only be talking about the improvements that were made during the series, but also the history behind it. How it came to be, and who invented it, and was it originally called an L1 or a J1? All that will be coming and more. So it all started with a man named Charles Lawrence. He was born September 30th, 1882. So Charles went to Yale University, you know, just a minor thing. He studied aeronautical engineering. And after he did that, he joined an automotive firm, but that got shut down after the panic of 1907. He's like, what do I do now? Well, he went to Paris. <laughs> what, a, what a cool guy. Went to Paris. So that was super cool. He studied in the Eiffel Laboratory and he started inventing things for aviation purposes. So he made a really cool center section that would go on bombers during World War I that had a super great lift to drag ratio. So that was super cool. But among that, he invented the L1, which was later changed to the J1, but we'll get into that later. At around the same time, another aircraft manufacturer called the Wright Aeronautical Company, you know, whatevs. This is Hannah from post-production. The Wright Aeronautical Company was very important and very successful. I tried to make a joke, but for people that don't know who the Wright Aeronautical Company is, they might not get it. So anyway, I'll get back to editing now. Was producing water-cooled engines for the Navy. And the Navy was like, look guys, you know, this isn't really working out. You know, it's, it's, it, there's like radiator leaks and it's not great over flying, you know, like the ocean and stuff. Maybe move to an air-cooled engine. And they were like, nah, man. This is working. You're still buying from us. It's fine. And the Navy was like, no, we need like air cooled because that would just be better. And they were like, ah, okay. Who, who can you buy designs from for, you know, the engine? So they get in touch with Charles. They're like, hey, Charles, man, I heard that you designed a really cool air cooled engine. And he's like, oh, heck yeah. So in 1923, Charles Lawrence is absorbed into the right aeronautical company. They're like, hey, sell us your designs. We'll offer you a great place in the company. You'll make a lot of money. People will know you, but we're going to have to change it to J, not L. So instead of L1, it was J1. And he was like, yeah, man, whatever. It's totally fine. That all happened. Great. The reason Lawrence didn't just try to produce it by himself is because he wasn't established. It's not like he had an assembly line or a mass production system whereas the, or the right aeronautical company already had that. So he sold his plans and he worked at the company until 1930. Even though Charles left the company, the Wright Aeronautical Company still produced the Wright J engine series until 1942. You know, we have the Wright J1, the Wright J2, the Wright J3, 4, 5, and then the Wright J67, which is one engine. It's not too different. But yeah, let's go look at some of the different variations and how they improve the engine over time. So as you can see, this is the exhaust ring and it connects to the front of the cylinder head, which isn't a great design because it's an air-cooled engine and air needs to get through the front of this cylinder through the fins here and it can't collect if there's a huge thing blocking it. You're blocking a lot of your surface area in which that wind comes through. So it would overheat and prematurely wear the valve guides. So to change that in later versions of the Wright J67 engine, which is what this is, they moved this connecting exhaust ring to the side of the cylinder instead of the front, so there was more you know, surface for air to collect and cool the engine. Now there are only about 50 airplanes that have Wright J engines on them, and of course dozens and dozens of static displays. But it's really neat, especially the Wright J5 engine. Very famous. It's the first engine that flew across the Atlantic with Charles Lindbergh. That's the engine he had on his airplane, on the Spirit of St. Louis. After that, people were like, woo, right J5s, right J5s, right J5s, because, you know, if it can make it over the Atlantic, then gosh, it can make it back to, you know, other places. <laughs> Here at the Kelch Aviation Museum, we have four different airplanes with a right J5 engine on them, which is super cool. And that's just in this hangar. I mean, there's more in the series. We have a couple Wright J67s on the field. It's, it's really neat to be able to see such antique aircraft with antique engines fly. It's so authentic and it's so cool. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you all here. Our hours are 10 to 4, Wednesday through Sunday. 
maybe I'll be working the floor and we can talk about engines. That'd be cool. You know, maybe. Huh? I don't know. And I'll see you in the next one. Is that it? I think that's it.